the Dodgers are going to be the go-to destination, not only because they have the exposure, but they give themselves the ability to make the playoffs every year. If you're able to get in the playoffs, we've learned like, hey, it's a crapshoot. Anybody could win this, but you have to get in. If you can see here, I already have my Otani shirts. My kids already have Otani shirts. Wife has Otani shirts. So I guess I'm like that target audience that's already you know paying dividends to the Dodgers here. But what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Full Count Podcast. Today is Thursday, January 18th, 2024. My name is Sway, and I'll be having a short segment of each episode where I discuss my thoughts and opinions about everything related to the world of Major League Baseball, while Andrew, Nick, and Chris discuss more real estate, business, current events, and how these things usually tie back to sports, more specifically baseball. Three balls, two strikes, pressure is on. This is where we discuss real estate, property improvement, and business. Together, we'll strategize on how to win. Welcome to the Full Count. So I have a few things that I want to touch on today that I think they're really, really important in the world of baseball. So one, of course, it's the deal that of the century that everyone's been talking about for the last month. The Dodgers signing Otani to a 10-year, $700 million contract. There's there's been a lot about said about that. Hey, is it good for baseball? Is it bad for baseball? Um, what kind of precedent does it set? And then come to find out a few days after this contract was, was signed, we learned that the Dodgers are only going to be paying Otani $2 million a year, and the remaining $68 million a year will be deferred till 2034. And then, of course, like yearly payments up until 2043, you know, 2044, whatever that was. I have a hypothesis that the Dodgers are not paying Otani $700 million. In reality, they're only going to pay maybe $4 million out of pocket to Otani, and they might even. They might not even be yeah, It might even be a free player, but I've done some math. You guys bear with me. I'm going to describe some things and then, hey, maybe we'll have some comments here afterwards and, and you you try to prove me wrong. But <clears throat> let's go through the facts on this contract and um, we'll see where we go from there. So like I was saying, 10 year, $700 million contract, uh, $680 million of that is being deferred until 2034. Then Otani will receive 10 annual payments of $68 million from 2034 to 20, 2043. Sorry about that. Um, but that's not really the case. So in this deal, if you account for inflation, that $700 million deal really amounts to $460 million in today's money. And so that's how it's going to work in this case. So um, according to the current CBA, uh, it requires that the Dodgers have to start putting um, a certain amount of money into an escrow account. And I, I did some research and it turns out that exact amount has to be $44 million into an escrow account starting in the summer of 2026. So $44 million a year thrown in that escrow account for the next 10 years. That's when payments just start. And then after that, you'll be receiving 10 annual payments till 2043. But let's let's talk about like what this does to the contract. Um, so by placing this forty-four million dollars a year into an escrow account, it allows the Dodgers to use time and compounding interest to their advantage, which is the Dodgers' ownership area of expertise. For those of you who are familiar with the Guggenheim Baseball Management Group or whatever it's called, um, they're very financially savvy. They know how to make money with other people's money. So. If you're throwing $44 million a year into an account, it's inevitably going to earn interest. So here's a math that I did in this one. If you were to put that money into an account, and let's just say we, we put in a conservative rate of return of 5%, um, in 10 years, the Dodgers will, are set to make about $212 million in profit from this money. So that will essentially make it a... $460 million account. It will take it from a $400 million contract to more of a 10 year, $228 million contract. So that if you were to take that in today's money, it would essentially mean that you're paying Otani $22 million a year in today's money. And if you were to take that, that number or that ranking and compare it to the highest paid players in baseball in 2023, that would make him the 33rd or sorry, the 35th highest paid player in the league. Okay, so now let's take this a step further. So in the last 20 years, the rate of return for the S&P 500 
it has been an average of 10.2%. So let's just say that $44 million in, that's accumulating interest for the, at least the next 10 years has a rate of return of 10.2%. That would make the, the Dodgers profit $456 million. And if that's the case, the Dodgers will only pay about $4 million out of pocket for Otani. Um, on top of this, the last payment's not due until 2043. So the Dodgers save even more time to, to have higher rates of return on this. So that being said, if the Dodgers are only going to pay $4 million towards this account, this is going to be the most profitable business transaction in the history of sports. So not only have the Dodgers found a way to, to sign the, the best and most marketable players that we've seen in our lifetime, there's a lot more that comes with this signing. <clears throat> That's going to help the Dodgers rake in billions and billions of dollars for the next you know, 10, 20, 30 years, at least for the foreseeable future. So what's going to happen with this is merch sales are going to go through the roof, which they already have. If you can see here, I already have my Otani shirts. My kids already have Otani shirts. Wife has Otani shirts. So I guess I'm like that target audience that's already you know paying dividends to the Dodgers here. But we have merch sales. We have TV deals. We had advertising revenue, um, not to mention all of Japan will be Dodger fans. All eyes are going to be on Otani. And now all eyes are going to be not only on Otani, but Yamamoto. This is going to open the floodgates to even more Japanese players. So when it's all said and done, this is going to be the most profitable contract we've ever seen. It's going to completely change the landscape of how contracts are constructed in baseball. Um, and not to mention, like this works out really, really well for Otani. Don't, don't get me wrong. He's still going to make $460 million in today's money. Um, but there comes a point where does he really need that much money? And this is probably why he took that team friendly deal. So this is going to open the door for all the high profile players to want to play for the Dodgers, for all the international people um, that are stars in Korea, that are stars in Japan, that are stars in Venezuela. Um, the Dodgers are going to be the go to destination, not only because they have the exposure, but they give themselves the ability to make the playoffs every year. And uh, hey, if you're able to get in the playoffs, we've learned like, hey, it's a crapshoot. Anybody could win this, but you have to get in. Kind of brings me to a quote that Jose Ramirez of the Guardians said when he signed his team-friendly deal. He could have gotten $250 million, maybe $300 million going somewhere else. But he chose to stay in Cleveland, and his exact quote is, um, $100 million is the same as $200 million, but I get to stay. So I guess when you make that much money, it doesn't really matter whether, whether you have $200 million or $700 million. You're rich beyond your wildest dreams, and you couldn't spend that money in an entire lifetime.